Hey everybody and welcome back to The Millennial Project. Today we are going to wrap up our business owner interviews with Greg Williams, who owns the main commercial property in Beechwood Canyon's historic village. Greg's family actually has a really interesting history. Uh, Greg's grandfather moved to Beechwood Canyon in the early 1920s when the land was first being developed in order to open a small neighborhood market. And Greg's family has pretty much been there ever since. Greg was born right below the Hollywood sign, he grew up there, and he continues to live there to this day. Greg is also a passionate historian and preservationist, and he has written an award-winning book on the history of Hollywood. So Greg obviously has a really interesting and unique perspective on this ongoing Hollywood sign issue. Um, I want to get right to Greg's interview, but before we get started, just remember that you can stay up to date with the Millennial Project's latest Hollywood sign videos by subscribing to the show on YouTube or liking the page on Facebook. Also, per usual, feel free to share what we're doing with your friends, your family, your neighbors, etc. because the show does travel by word of mouth, so it's always super, super helpful to get supportive shoutouts from all of you. Uh, all right, with all that out of the way, let's take a look at our next interview with Greg Williams. It's interesting because the sign back there was really to sell real estate. It said Hollywoodland. Um, it never was to represent Hollywood. And when they opened this track in 1922, that was when Hollywood down at you know Sunset and Vine uh, and Hollywood and Vine. Then it was going gangbusters. I mean, uh, right after World War One, the American movie industry just took off. But these developers up here who were uh, Chandler and uh, Sherman and some really guys influential in the San Fernando Valley getting the water and making a ton of money on land, they knew that this was going to be just a real estate development. So that's what Hollywoodland was about. And the sign itself was very flimsy. It fell down probably about five times. It fell down, I think, the first four years it was up because it was they just sort of put some poles on the ground and put some tin up. So it's 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 not really a, a, one of these great monuments. It's not like the Eiffel Tower, like a work of engineering, and it's not like Mount Rushmore, a work of art. It's it's actually it epitomizes what everybody thinks of Hollywood. It's just a cheap, flimsy facade that represents nothing. So it sounds to me kind of like you're saying that where some of these other monuments have been engineered and planned to be public, you know, attractions. This is just kind of this random thing that happened to kind of fall into this position of being, you know, what some people are starting to call like the Eiffel Tower right. of Los Angeles. Right. So, you know, these, these poor people up here who are sitting here with this sign that was to advertise the land that they own, their private property. I mean, it was to come up here and buy a house and live here. And now it represents uh, like it's a national monument. And you, who can have a national monument in your backyard without any kind of regulation? I mean, you go to Yosemite and they'll only let so many people in at a time. Whereas right now it's a complete free for all. And the, the city is wasting just tons of money on parking enforcement and police. I mean, the, what they have to do to come up here on a busy weekend to just so we can drive our streets, it's, it's incredible. So the, there's kind of a lot going on with this Hollywood sign issue. Could you just kind of explain your perspective on the issue in general? Sure. Um, well, the outgoing uh, city council rep uh, decided he really loved tourists. He used to stand up here and say, where are you from? Iowa, Indiana. So he was really pro that. In fact, he was suggesting that we put a tower here on top of the store so people could climb and see the sign and, and sell t-shirts and souvenirs. But what he did is he went in and started setting up these points for tourists to come see the sign within the residential area. And uh, without doing an EIR, without getting any kind of city approval or uh, any community input, he uh, opened a public gate uh, last Last year at the end of Beechwood and it was interesting because it was all closed down while he was uh, getting it ready and we had no problem but as soon as he opened the gate it was in February he did a, a national push with all the media we had all the local media up here and he was saying everyone come through here to hike uh, to the sign and uh, unfortunately it's just not uh, it's not, doesn't accommodate the hordes of tourists because there's no sidewalks there's no uh, facilities and there are now two lawsuits which I'm sure you'll be investigating going on because the city misstepped there so what are the problems that you deal with on kind of a daily basis because of this tourist traffic um, well you know I know uh, the Beechwood market and all the uh, businesses have uh, hikers using their restrooms and they're not customers so it brings no economic value to us whatsoever. So, you know, the city is like, oh, we need the tourists. But the problem is with the tourists coming here, there's no reward for it. It's just a big loss. There's no money. And then, of course, the issue was parking because uh, when LaBange first opened the gate, everybody was parked right up there at the end of Beechwood and you couldn't walk through it. It was really a disaster. Um, the fire trucks couldn't get through. The cars were just parked in the middle of the street. It was a total mess. So what the neighbors up there were forced to do were, uh, was a parking permit district. And that means only residents can park. 
So that seemed to work to get the cars out, except once the PPD started, where there wasn't a PPD, everybody started parking. So then now they're trying to put a PPD right up into the commercial area, which is unfortunate because the commercial area needs parking for customers. So yeah, the, the, it's become a real huge issue for how we can survive here. So for you, are you personally and the people that, that you work with in these businesses, one of which your family started a long time ago, right? Is this? Are you guys for the PPDs? Are you against the PPDs? Uh, I'm, I'm for the PPDs where it's strictly residential. Where I have an issue with the PPDs is where it's in front of a commercial area because PPDs, parking uh, permit districts, are anti-business. They're set up really for uh, neighborhoods who have commercial areas that are so successful that all the customers are parking in the resi residential area and that makes sense but the problem is here uh, the businesses were never a part of the parking problem we've never caused a problem so the PPDs are all set up for residentials as a matter of fact the employees who come up here and park on Beechwood Drive to work here can't park anymore and can't get permits because you, businesses can't get permits. Uh, customers who want to come up and shop in the village can't park on the street. Uh, so it's just, they've got the law really set up so that the PPDs, once a, a residential area puts it in, commercial areas are just stuck. And I have heard of this, you know, this little area right here. You know, when I've talked to everyone in the neighborhood, they talk about the kind of enchanting nature of this little mini European village and this being kind of the focal point of that European village. So do you see this kind of current solution to push the PPDs further into the commercial area as a danger to sustaining yeah. know, this identity that Hollywood Land has had for years. That has been the charm, is the village. It's really wild to be living in a city of like LA and to be able to go stroll to your market with your shopping bag and meet your uh, fellow neighbors. You know, and the, this area has been a commercial district for 91 years, so it's sort of like, well, you know, what do you guys want? Do you want this to become townhomes? You know, it's like, do you want a developer to come in and just and take out the commercial area? I think the big issue right now with, is the way the city's handling it is everybody up here realizes their property values are getting affected. And I think that's what the, the common theme here is and, and what we're standing hard for because you don't want to have the city come in and set up these things for visitors that affect people's individual property values. So if we, if, if, you know, we lose the, the commercial area down here, because it's lovely having a, a store and a restaurant where you don't have to leave the canyon. So if, once you lose that, you know, you, it, there's the, there's the, uh, there's a danger that we could lose 30% of our property values. So the other kind of one thing I did want to touch on, we've talked to a lot of people about this, how do you feel about the kind of the current leadership of CD4, the current Councilman Rue? He's, he's got a lot of issues in front of him. Uh, my, uh, my, my problem is when we had this thing with the PPDs, we, Tom LeBange told our, all our tenants that uh, if the PPDs were going to hurt the businesses, it wasn't going to happen. And essentially, I just heard Rue the other night, and he said, yeah, Tom LeBanche lied to us. He lied to all the store people. Um, what happened was uh, they only started to meet with us the beginning of, end of last year, uh, the homeowners and uh, CD4, and they met with uh, all the tenants and the three property owners down here, and they never really let us know it was a done deal. So we had these meetings going, well, this is not going to work for us. And then the next thing we know, CD4 is telling us it's a done deal, it's a done deal. So you said you were supposed to be a part of the conversation, yet you were not brought into the loop. No. And then all these solutions are coming through, like they want to put parking meters out here, or you know, everybody starts coming into the lot and they say, well, why don't you reconfigure your lot? And it's like, well, how much money is that going to cost? So why am I, why am I investing in this property to try to survive? I mean, is it like, is, is that right. even a To a mitigate reality? the Hollywood sign traffic that, that you, won't you don't handle. even benefit from, it sounds right. like. No, don't benefit at all, except the, we're the public restrooms for this area, people coming here. Um, I want to bring up the point, you know, with the neighbors, the, what I, I, we've all felt that what LeBange did when he was leaving was trying to pit everybody against each other. Um, so, you know, with these new B PPD coming in on Lower Beachwood in front of the businesses, I completely understand where the neighborhood is. I completely understand where these residents are. I live here. I see what they have to suffer through. So I am absolutely do not hold them responsible at all. They're like grasping at straws. They figure this is the only solution because the city's not going to be looking at the big picture. So they are are, are, are totally trying to just get a lifestyle back where they can live in their home in peace and not on a weekend and a holiday have it turn into hell. 
Um, so, but the thing is, they, they have to realize too that we need to get a compromise. And I know um, you're going to talk to Sarah Jane Schwartz, and she interviewed, uh, she polled everybody on Beechwood Drive north of here, and 81 percent of the homeowners wanted to close the gate. And I, I told CD, I've told CD4 many times, once you close the gate, we won't have a problem. We won't even need PPD. And they, they say to me, well, we can't close the gate while those lawsuits are going, so we can't even discuss the issue. So it's like, well, then CD4, if you can't discuss the issues till the lawsuits are settled, why are we trying to ameliorate? Why are we trying to figure out why are we sticking PPDs around and trying to patch the PPDs? Why don't we just wait for the lawsuits to be settled? So that's my position. So kind of just going back to solutions, what would you like to see as a business owner, as a member of the community, as an author, you know, as a homeowner, what solution makes the most sense to you? Well, the best solution is if they are going to let people get close to the sign is to find a way to do it so they're not walking through residential streets because these streets are substandard and they're really small um, and they're actually historic streets. Holly Woodland is really very special. It's not an ordinary neighborhood because we have these granite walls and stairs built by stonemasons, German stonemasons in 1920. So it's really, really special. So they, you have to take everybody off the public streets. Now my suggestion, and this is really difficult because Griffith Park is also a fragile ecosystem. We've got P22, we've got a, a mountain cat up there, we've got deer, we've got all sorts of wildlife. But my solution would be, and this is uh, what the city will have to do, is to have everybody come in through the back end, which is Travel Town. There are no residences there. You can have people come up, you could build a parking structure, access all the trails, they can walk their heart's content out, and they don't have to come through a residential neighborhood. So there are obviously are a lot of competing narratives about the past everywhere in American politics and how that informs what we should do in the future. I think Hollywood land is no different. As someone who wrote a book on Hollywood and the history of this area, how do you think you know, that informs what we should do now with this Hollywood sign and what the vision for the community should be moving forward? Well, it concerns me because Los Angeles does not care about the past. And I know we're all supposed to move on and live in the future. But uh, when I was working as a preservationist in the Hollywood Heritage uh, down in Hollywood proper, um, it, I started in 1986. And at that point, if you'd locked in all the frontage buildings along Hollywood Boulevard and Vine Street and, and, the, and the important streets there, we would have had a uh, UNESCO World Heritage site. Now we're supposed to be for tourists, so what we, our, my point in, the, in the, or those early days of preservations was we need to save these buildings. You know, if you want to build high-rises, do it back. We had plenty of property. There was, there was parking lots in the back. But save these historic buildings that were the first buildings, structures on the land on Hollywood Boulevard that were here in the golden age of Hollywood because that's what people want to see. So the city, of course, it's just a mess down there. You know, it's they, they, they're, they're building high rises for the transits around the transit stations, and nobody's really using the transit stations. So it's just a giant boondoggle. It got worse and worse and worse. We're up here in Hollywoodland. We are a really historic district. I mean, we are old Hollywood. The place was built with the intention to make a beautiful neighborhood with these European influences and in architecture. So it's a real asset to the city, and we can't just be tramping over the past. It sounds like although we can never expect to go back to an era pre-GPS that we should be concerned about ensuring that Hollywood land is a cultural heritage site or right. as a, a cultural monument in itself survives just like we would have wanted to have happen in Hollywood sure. 20, 30 years ago. Yes. Yeah. And perhaps they would have to do it where if you want to come and walk our historic stairs and, and, and walk the neighborhood, you have to sign in. And like Yosemite, there's only 50 people allowed at a time, you know, so we actually have to put a visitor center. The city has to do something like that because it is a resource. And we, and, and, and we can't say, oh, we love tourists, but meanwhile, just desecrate everything that they would come to see and, and uh, you know the, if the city takes the takes, takes the stand well it's all about the tourists it's like well you know we're not benefiting from any of these tourist visitors they, they, it doesn't benefit this neighborhood at all and there's 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 no give and take it's just all uh, give on this neighborhood's part I think that's it for me I think that's like a good place to close on okay I really appreciate sure. it thank you for chatting sure, with Andrew. Me.